In this quick video, I want to demonstrate how we can use one plugin alongside Elementor to get creative and build our own archive pages for WordPress. So up until now, it's been quite difficult to get creative with archive pages in WordPress unless you knew how to start getting the code in. We can now go in and customize pretty much every aspect of how that archive page is going to work. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, the channel where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so just not to make this video too long, I've already gone ahead and done a few things. I've downloaded the three plugins that I need, which is the custom post type UI. I've also got advanced custom fields and the pro add-on, although you don't need that for this particular tutorial. And I've also installed the Jet Engine plugin. So I've got everything in place ready. I've also created a new custom post type. So we just jump into the custom post type section. You can see exactly what I've done. So I've created a post type called albums. Just gone through and set some really basic parameters up in there. Just told that I wanted to be inside in the navigation area. It's the first option in there. And other than that, nothing else has been done. If we go to the custom fields and take a look at the field groups, you can see if we jump into the album section in there, I've created a very simple field group of artist, album cover, and album info. And I've set the ruler to the post type is equal to album. So in other words, these will apply to the album post type that we just set up through custom post types. Other than that, I've done nothing else. So if you're unfamiliar with this, I've got a couple of videos that will show you how to do all this. I'd recommend checking those out. It'll get you up to speed with how you use advanced custom fields and custom post type UI. Okay, so we've done those basics. Let's just jump over into the album section so we can take a look at what I've done in there. And you can see I've created three albums. And if I open up one of those, you can see we've got the album title, we've got the artist, we've got the album cover artwork, and we've got some information about the album itself. Other than that, nothing more. So very, very simple, but a, custom, a couple of custom fields that we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the Jet Engine section. You can see we've got five different options in there. Now, where you've got the listings and the post types and the taxonomies and meta boxes and so on, I'm not going to use the options for things like taxonomies and so on because that kind of duplicates what you can do with advanced custom fields. And I just want to show you how you can use it with advanced custom fields because if you're like me and you're used to working with that, you're not necessarily going to change the system you're accustomed to to move over to the jet engine sort of equivalent. So the next thing we need to do now we've got Jet Engine installed and set up and ready to go is to create our custom layout for our particular archive. Now what you do with this is you create one element, which is one archive entry, and then the loop is called up as part of WordPress to output all of the different entries in the design you create. So it's very easy to work with. If you ever use Visual Composer, then you know with the grid builder element there, you could do a very similar thing, but you couldn't link that through to advanced custom fields or any kind of custom data. But with this one, we can do exactly that. So let's take a look at how we build that out right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a listing. So we're going to come in and say add new. You can see we now get a couple of options. We're saying what's the source, what's the post type, and to give it a name. So you can see if we open up the post, we've got posts and we've got terms. If we expand terms, you can see we've got things like from a taxonomy. So you've got categories, tags, format, and so on. If we come back to posts, you can see we've got from post type. And then we've also got a range of other options in there. And what we're interested in is the albums option because that's the custom post type we've created. So we'll choose albums and we're going to call this one album listing just so it makes sense to exactly what we're doing. So once we've done that, we say we're going to create a list item and then that'll open up and allow us to start creating our elemental based layout. Now, when you install Jet Engine, you get some new tools available inside Elemental Pro. So if we scroll right down to the bottom. You can see we've got the listing elements and in there we've got seven different options. Now, we're going to just use some simple ones, and I would recommend check out the documentation if you want to know more about what each and every one of these particular functions do. We're going to keep it really simple. Now, what you need to get your head around to start off with is we're not creating the layout for all of our listings. We're creating it just for one entry. So whether you want that to be one on top of the other or you want to be three wide, however you want to lay it out and whatever information you want to put in there, that's what we're creating, one single entry. So what we're going to do is we're going to build that entry up quite simply and quite quickly. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say we want to put a dynamic image in there. So we can drag that up and drop it in. 
you can see that now puts a placeholder in and we've got some options on the left hand side now the nice thing with this is you can use jet engine on its own and you can leverage the power of these particular widgets or you can use them in conjunction with the dynamic options you have inside elemental pro itself so you can mix and match to make sure you get exactly what you want so if you find a function isn't available in jet engine then you may well find that that is available inside elemental pro itself and we'll take a look at that again in a moment so you can see we've got what's the source so the post thumbnail is the sort of the normal featured image you'd upload we didn't do that we want to choose our own custom field so we can click and open that up you can see we have acf as an option so we can click on there and once we do that we now get an additional set of options to go with it so which field do we want to use we can click and expand and you can see there's our album cover which is an image type this taken in from advanced custom fields so we'll click on that it automatically updates and pulls in a record for us so this is the first thing very easy and now if we want to go through and configure and tweak that we can do that we we'll leave it for a moment let's just build the actual entry up itself so let's come back into all the different widgets we've got scrolled out at the bottom and this time we're going to say we want to use a dynamic field so we'll drag that over and drop it underneath Again, you can see we've got different options on the left-hand side. You've got post or term data. So these are things that are part of the normal post type as part of WordPress. So title, date, and so on. If you don't want to use that, you can come back in. You can see we've got metadata, which is to do with Jet Engine itself. Or again, we've got ACF. And you can see that opens up the option for artist, album info, and so on. So these are the different text fields that we've got that we can leverage and pull in using this particular widget. So for this, we're just going to use the album info to start off with. We're going to click on there, and that'll pull in the data, the relevant information. Now, one of the things I like about this jet engine is one simple option that says hide if value is empty. So this is something that currently is only in the dynamic field, so it's a little bit of a limitation. It's still better than what Elementor is giving us, where we have no control for hiding and showing information based upon empty or sort of pre-filled fields and so on. But this is something that apparently I've spoken to the developers and they are going to implement this in more of the widgets further on down the line. As yet, I don't know what Elementor are going to do. I've asked them, but they haven't come back with any real sort of solid information about whether they're going to start using this kind of conditional logic as part of the widgets. I really, really hope they do because it's going to make such a big difference to us, the developers. Okay, so we can say hide if this information is empty, so we can just hide that field completely. So you can see we've now pulled in some ACF information, we pull in the album info. So we've used the sort of native functions that are part of Jet Element, uh, sorry, Jet Engine. However, if we want to pull in some information that's directly used from Elementor Pro itself, we can do that. So one of the things that's currently missing from this is the ability to sort of prepend or append any kind of entry with information that you want. So this is something that Elementor Pro does have. So let's just come back to these and we we'll say we're going to drop a heading in this time. So we'll drop that in there, we'll place it above our information. All we're going to do is we're going to come through and we say we want dynamic data, scroll down, we're going to find that ACF field option, click on there, Click on the little wrench and choose the icon, uh, the key. And from there, we're going to say we want to use the artist. So that'll pull in the artist's name. So what I want to do now is just prepend that with that information. So we click on the advanced option. We say before, we'll say artist name. And we'll drop space in there. So you can see now we've got that artist name in there. And we've used that before option to prepend the artist name with the information. So the final piece of the information that we want to put in is the album title itself. So let's just come back over, scroll right down to the bottom, and this time we're going to choose a dynamic field. Again, drop that in underneath there. Post term, that's fine, we'll use that. Title, again, that's fine, so we can leave that in there, and you can see that pulls in the title for this particular album. So what we've done now is we've created that first holder for a particular post. So we've done with that, we're going to click on Publish. Once that's saved out, we've now created that basic template. So now we can use that to reference further on into the design process. So let's just close out of this. We'll exit our dashboard. So now we're ready to take our new listing and create our archive for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to create a new page. So we're going to say add new. And from there, we're going to create our albums. Okay. If you want to go through and set anything else up now before we jump into Elemental, we can do that. So depending upon what kind of theme that you're using, you may want to set up various different parameters just to make sure everything looks consistent. I'm going to leave that for now. I'm just going to click on Publish to make sure any of the changes that I've made are saved before we jump into Elemental. And I'm just going to open up the Elemental Editor so we can start working. So once the Elemental Editor opens up, we're going to go down and take a look at one of the 
widgets that we've got as part of Jet Engine. Now we've already taken a look at the dynamic field and also things like dynamic image. But what we're interested in is the listing grid. And the listing grid is the foundation for how we build our archive page. So the first thing we've just done is go and create our listing. Now we can reference that by using the listing grid widget. So we're going to drag that onto our page design. You can see it says, please select a listing to show. So if we take a look on the left hand side, we've now got some options we can use. First thing is, is the listing option. And if we click to expand that, you can see we've got all of the different listings you've got created as part of your jet engine. What we are looking for is the album listing. So this is where I said earlier on, it's good to put that listing term in there so you always know exactly what it is you're referencing, difference between archives and listings and so on. So let's just say we want the album listing. Once we do that, it now pulls in any of the information that's part of that particular design that we created. So we've now got our album listing. We can adjust our column order if we want to. And again, we've got things like the normal options as part of Elementor, so we can go through and set things up to be different on mobiles, desktops, and tablets, and so on. We're going to leave that as is for now. We can use this as an archive template if we want to, so we can just enable or disable that how we want to use it. We can also specify the number of posts that we want to display on any particular given page. We've then got the post query, terms query, and widget visibility, and so on. Now, these are things that I'm not going to go into in this particular video. We're going to cover these in a lot more detail as part of an incredibly long, in-depth video on where I want to show you how we can use custom post types, advanced custom fields, and Jet Engine alongside some other different tools to create a fully-fledged custom website that will have tons of really cool options. So stick around and check out that on the channel as it's released very soon. So we're going to leave that as is, and you can see now if we update this, we've now got our page created. So if I open up my test site, we can take a look at this in action. So I'm on the home page of my test site, and you can see I've already added in the albums page to my navigation. And if we click on there, you can see that now opens up our newly created archive for our albums. Just to show you what I'm talking about, if we come to the blog section, you can see this is going to use the default archive. So you can see we've got the same posts in there, but the listing layout is completely different. So we are using our custom design. So let's just jump back into albums. So everything is in there looking pretty cool. Now, what about if we want to make some changes to the, each of these different layouts? Well, we can do that by going back into the listings option. So let's just come back into uh, our dashboard. We're going to come down to Jet Engine, and we're going to go to listings. Once we're inside listings, we're going to go back into our album listing and we say edit with Elementor. So we can now go through and style this any way we want, and that'll apply to each individual record that we see displayed. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep this really simple. We're going to select this particular area, this particular element. Once we've done that, we're just going to apply some simple styling to it. Let's come to our style section, and let's just say we want to put a background color in. So we'll just say we want to put a pale gray background in there, something like that. We'll come to the border option and we'll say the border type of solid. We'll set a one pixel width on there. We'll set that to be slightly darker gray. I'm not too worried about this making this look good. I just want to demonstrate how it all works. We'll set this to be something like six pixels. And if we want to, we can drop a box shadow on there as well. We'll leave the default values. That's fine. So once we've done that, let's just come back over to the advanced section and we're just simply going to put in a little bit of padding so we don't have everything sitting flush to the edges. And we'll click on update. So we just applied some really simple styling to that. Jump back over to our archive page for albums and we refresh that. You can see once that refreshes, all those styling that we've just applied to it have now been added into each one of our individual records, each one of our individual entries that's going to be displayed. How about if we'd like to take the image that's being used and link that through to the actual post itself? Well, we can do that incredibly easily as well. Jump back into Elementor, back into our listing, select our image, and you can see all the settings are on the left hand side. At the moment, linked image is disabled. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that to enable it. And you can see the link source. We can set things up to do a permalink. Or we could use an ACF field if we'd set up a custom link to something like an external site or something. If we leave the permalink on there and we just click on update, that now will make that a link that will take us through to that particular post. And then if we wanted to, we could use the power of Elementor Pro and create a custom layout for the singular post type just for our albums to lay everything out exactly how we want it to. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but like I say, in the future video, we'll take you through and cover the entire website building process. That will be part of it. We will create a custom archive and a custom singular post type just for displaying the information that we want from a particular type of post. But that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this particular video. We update this. We'll jump over to our albums again. We'll refresh this. 
and we'll find that they now become links that'll take us through to the particular album. So we click on it, it'll take us through to the default template, which ultimately is not showing anything because our custom data isn't being displayed. We need to set that up as a custom post type. Okay, so that's it. That's what I wanted to demonstrate in this particular video. So there we go. That's how we create our custom archive pages with custom archive layouts using Jet Engine from Zemes. Now this is a great plugin and if you'd like to find out more about it or you'd like to purchase it, please consider using the affiliate link in the description below. It doesn't cost you any more money, but does help support what we do on the channel and allows us to create more content for you. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but let me know in the comment section below why you didn't enjoy the video. It helps me create better content for you moving forward. Speak in the comment section if you've got any comments or questions or feedback on this video. Please leave those in the comment section. Let's get a conversation started so we can discuss what you think of Jet Engine and you think of the future of WordPress using tools like this to get much more creative. Well, as always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tats, and until next time, take care.